flags flying at half mast above the public buildings here at Woodford. It's so great to be back out in the forest. I feel like I've got unfinished business after that walk at the weekend. Um, when I got into the pub and I looked at the map to see where I'd gone wrong, I realised there was a grey area near where I ended up in the dark on the road and of course I couldn't see anything because it was pitch black. Um, but I really want to go back there now and it's another area on my uh, OS 174 Explorer map that I haven't explored so yeah it's good to be out in the forest this morning. I was going to do an urban walk today, well, my next video is a bit more urban but uh, the urge to get back out into the forest, back into the, the peacefulness of the wooded glades. Although I think it's going to be open fields today actually. Let's go and see. So far it's just an area on a map to me. So this is basically on the border between the London Borough of Waltham Forest and uh, the London Borough of Redbridge. Some sort of film shoot going on here near the uh, Queen Elizabeth Hunting Lodge. My guess from seeing a bed hanging from a tree is that it could be a photo shoot or a pop video. What's the date? Do we know the date it was built, roughly? Or? 1543. 1543, right? Uh, as a great standing, which is what we know as a grandstand, instead of watching football, it was for watching hunting. Ah. So they, this is lunch. They say that the, uh, the pastry on the line. top of Queen Elizabeth's Hunting Lodge, where Henry VIII would have watched the, the hunt on the plane. The overview of where I hope to go today. So I'm going to come and walk basically up here. I've not been to any of this up to Upshire, been there, and I've not covered any of this territory. Yeah, it's a good view back towards Queen Elizabeth Hunting Lodge. So this area here was part of Henry VIII's deer park. Now it's a place for walking your dog. Definite evidence of spring. Never walking in the forest, I always try to remember to be grateful for the fact that we only have this as forest because people fought to save it. Otherwise it would have all been enclosed and probably built upon by now. The Cuckoo Brook. This is the point on Saturday evening where I got my map out for the first time and uh, placed myself in the wrong part of the forest. I was tempted to take that path up there, uh, which I think I'll do now actually. Wow, great path, taking me into uncharted territory, the forest's edge, the edge of London. So wonderfully peaceful out here. You know, the city's going about its usual business, the rush and the tear. And yet out here on the edge of London there's nobody. Basically, I'm 
here. I'm about to turn up this lane and then I want to go down past the police training camp to Fernhill Wood and then up this green ride then maybe come back this way. That's one idea anyway. Yow! McMullen's beers from Hartford. Sadly, it's just after midday, so I'm not really a lunchtime drinker. I rarely drink before evening, really before dark, apart from midsummer, obviously. Skeleton of an old wooden barn. Here, but if it was a clearer day we'd have some amazing views across the Lee Valley but it's still great to be up on this high ridge here right on the edge of the on the eastern side of the Lee Valley so this is a memorial raised by the uh, Essex Anglo-American Goodwill Association and it says we salute and commemorate the service and courage of our gallant allies of the 184th Anti-Aircraft Battery or Anti-Aircraft Battalion VS Army in the defence of London 1944, I guess it must be the uh, Voluntary Service Army of course it's very poignant because it's right next to the Metropolitan Police uh, training camp and the, um, it's where the tactical support, helicopter tactical support is based right next to me here actually of course, they're mourning the loss of one of their own. Very sadly, heroic PC, Keith Palmer. Flags flying at half-mast at the entrance. And the sun has come out as soon as I reach Fernhill Wood. A great bit of luck. getting those shots but it does involve me running back up the hill to get my camera. Great view looking north from Fern Hill sort of in the direction of the uh, M25 and Waltham Abbey I think beyond that hill there. It's wonderful isn't it? So we really are on the edge of London up here those hills you see in the distance, those hills you see in the distance, that's Essex, and then beyond that to the west is Hertfordshire. around from Fern Hill and come back to Lippet Hill and I'm going to head along this bridleway here which is part of the Greenwich Meridian Trail. Now, this is some old school infrastructure here. I hear that buzz. I don't want to get too close to it. Stunning view, looking northwards, but now the sky has cleared a bit. Oh, this really is a magnificent part of uh, the forest. I think we are technically still in Epping Forest, right on the edge of it. Just the other side of Lippitz Hill now. Looking up towards Waltham Abbey, I think you can see the Abbey. I'll zoom in. Can you see the Abbey? I'll put my finger over it. Can do that. You can see the abbey there.
These uh, young women in this car have just asked me if I knew the legend of the hill. And apparently, if you turn your engine up, if you turn your engine off here, it drags you up the hill, and the hill's called Hangman's Hill. And their car is going to be pulled. Oh my God, look at this. Look at that. The car is being drawn uphill. That is astonishing. So according to local legend, this is was called Hangman's Hill. And there was a gallows here on this corner, or near here. And this is where people were dragged up and hung here. And now people come up in their cars, they turn their engine off and they get pulled up the hill. And it, I've just seen two cars do it, it's not. So this is, that, this is that corner, Gallows Corner, Hangman's Hill, something like that. I love the way that those legends live on and that, you know, you get people driving out here to see if their cars are going to be pulled up like the unfortunate peasants dragged up here to be hung. Probably for the most trivial of crimes as well. So back up into Epping Forest and I aim to go all the way through and out the other side at Loughton. This part of the forest here is kind of quite famously associated with the, uh, the poet John Clare, the peasant poet John Clare, who was confined to an asylum just up here at High Beach. I don't really talk about John Clare much when I'm in the forest because it's the obvious point of reference I think but also it's been covered brilliantly by the wonderful Ian Sinclair his book um, Edge of the Orison covers Clare's association with Epping Forest and then there's the great film that Ian made with Andrew Cotting where they retrace John Clare's journey from High Beach back to his birthplace near Peterborough and John Clare being played by Toby Jones, the actor Toby Jones wandering through here So through there, you have the outer edge of Loughton Camp, one of the magnificent sights in East London, I would say. I was going to say in the forest, but I think that's one of the most magnificent sights in all of London, and one of the most significant as well. Uh, I'm not going to go through there, though. I've made a video where I pass through Loughton Camp. I will link to that below, and at the end of this video, there'll be a link. So today I want to go down Baldwin's Hill, so I've got to turn away from Loughton Camp. So this here is Little Monk Wood, apparently named because this is where the monks from both Waltham Abbey and Stratford Langthorne Abbey had the uh, rights to uh, gather wood here. So we come up, it's a bit of a schlep from uh, the other side of Stratford, get your wood up here and carry it all the way back. It's some walk. Makes you wonder as well whether the, there was a bit of sort of monkish rivalry between the monks of Waltham and the monks of Stratford Langthorne. <laughs> so. so, when I was at the uh, visitor centre at the Queen Elizabeth Hunting Lodge earlier on, I, I bought this postcard, and the lady uh, in the gift shop told me the story of this postcard, or what she thinks is the story. And this postcard is by uh, a great artist called Jacob Epstein. Uh, I think mostly better known, better known for his sculpture than his, uh, than his paintings, although well known for you know, being a great artist. And she said that it's, um, she thinks it's here. I think this is called, this is called uh, Baldwin's Hill Pond, I think, or Baldwin's Pond. But she called it the Lost Pond, unless I put it completely wrong. If I have, and you are the lady in the gift shop, please forgive me. So I said I would come here at the end of the walk and see if I could photograph it and match it up. So shall we see? So I guess that would be it there. And it does kind of match, doesn't it? If I put it in, look. There's the curve, the water, the curve, and then the bank of the trees there. 
that would kind of match. And because Jacob Epstein apparently lived near here, and somebody else told me he used to sit in his garden with no clothes on, painting away. I think he may have been eccentric. That's a pretty good match. Well done, that lady in the gift shop at the Queen Elizabeth's Hunting Lodge. It feels like I've finished that journey that I did on at the weekend in the last video. Still deciding where the next one will take me. This is beautiful. I think this is Woodbury Hollow. What an amazing view across Loughton. Looking over there, looking further east. Right, so this is the view that you get from here. All these places, the furthest away is Crystal Palace Transmitter and Croydon Transmitting Station are visible from here. They're very unlikely to come out on this camera. But you can probably just see the tops of the city of the, the towers of the city of London.